In this Elden Ring multiplayer, what Elden Ring co-op and PvP could be like video will be taking a look at the upcoming Elden Ring RPG by From Software and Bandai Namco, and speculating on the multiplayer systems that you are likely to see based on past releases. Does Elden Ring have multiplayer? Is there co-op and PvP? Will there be invasions or leaderboards? We'll explore all these concepts and more. Some information around this has been confirmed, but keep in mind most of this is guesswork based on past From Software games and development and market trends. The big question is whether there will be multiplayer in Elden Ring, but to us, this is a given. From Software stated that Elden Ring is a third-person action RPG with a fantasy setting. Gameplay is not so far from Dark Souls. Elden Ring belongs to the same genre. To us, this means we can expect Elden Ring to be to Dark Souls what Dark Souls was to Demon Souls and what Bloodborne is to both. A reimagining and reapplication of similar mechanics and systems. Since multiplayer is such an integral part of the gameplay of these games, we don't see that changing for Elden Ring. So if we establish there will surely be multiplayer, what will it look like? Let's look at the previous games for some basics. Souls games have an engaging and addicting no-hassle drop-in multiplayer system. In a departure from trends from software, Souls games did not provide you with a lobby or party mechanic, but instead gave simple and somewhat cryptic signs that allow you to summon silent companions that can only communicate via gestures. This design came as from software's Hidetaka Miyazaki believed games and gamers were over-communicating. Given that this philosophy hasn't really changed across Demon's Souls, Dark Souls, or Bloodborne, and has been successful in Souls-like games such as Neo and Code Vein, we expect that a similar approach will be taken for Elden Ring. This means that you should expect to see drop-in multiplayer featuring both allies and enemies revolving around your interaction with elements of the world that invites these players into your domain. Further, given the progressive steps to limit harassment PvP, we expect to see measures to avoid invasions or hostile play, and provide a structure for those who want to focus on PvP to fully engage with it, be it in an arena or by auto-summon covenant mechanics. The following is a quick expected features summary. Sign or bell summons or a similar element that invites others into your world. Ember human bell maiden form that enables online play and PvP. Summon range that limits the default invasion range or an auto adjustment to host level for both cooperative players and invaders. Solo play sections. With an open world and dungeons, there will likely be areas that are not open for multiplayer in order to preserve the progression path of the character and prevent an invader spawning 10 minutes away from a host. Six player online at the very least. We think there's a possibility that we will see larger battles given the size of the proposed field, and there are endless possibilities of improvement with a covenant and arena system. Faction-based multiplayer. As I just mentioned, From Software has a pretty nifty system with auto summons that let you participate in PvP and help those willing to avoid it. We expect this system to return and to see more defense-based PvP and cooperation-based multiplayer factions. A big issue with the Souls games was the P2P system that makes up for the backbone of the multiplayer elements. Out of all the games, Demon's Souls is the only one that had dedicated servers, and these were discontinued with time due to the ongoing cost of keeping them online. Given Bandai Namco would have to pay for the servers, we think the P2P system will be making a return, but perhaps with some modern twists such as the dedicated connection servers that Dark Souls 3 had, as well as region matchmaking and, if we're lucky, ping lockouts for PvP. The multiplayer in Souls was integral to gameplay and replayability, and we expect Elden Ring will be no different. Since the previous P2P approach has been successful, we do not see a big push to try a completely new setup. Therefore, you should be expecting to feel right at home planning your lag stabs and rolling your way through as many iframes as you can amid your packet loss and ever-reliable phantom range. So, if the previous system works so well and the P2P is likely to return, what could be enhanced, improved, or changed to spice things up? We have some ideas. From Software has experimented with punishment mechanics before, so adding a hunted status to players who perform evil actions and introducing special rewards can be an easy next step to up the stakes of PvP, perhaps a little beyond what the Book of the Guilty gave us in Dark Souls. Another interesting addition could be to up the ante on the Defender Covenants to also include the day, night, and weather cycles of the game and provide different bonuses to combatants based on them. For example, if there were a Warriors of Sunlight Covenant, it'd be quite fun for them to be more powerful on a sunny day and be weaker to damage during the night. For co-op players, implementing a more advanced reputation system regarding helpfulness and knowledge could spice up and encourage those who love to praise the sun and give them a separate progression based on their multiplayer activities. This could be done similarly to the original Demon Souls player rating system that allowed hosts to rate a phantom after a co-op session, and this rating was displayed alongside your summon sign. Asynchronous play could also get some inspiration from successful ideas by other developers. One such example are Neo's Revenants that leave behind an AI version of your character for PvP and the Blue Graves that provide an AI companion based on your character that can help players while you're doing something else. 
Additionally, a nemesis system could be introduced, bringing strong and challenging monsters to your world based on other players' deaths, and providing special rewards if you manage to defeat the monster. For co-op players, another out-of-the-box improvement could be to include a shared life meter, much like Neo's expedition system. This allows for players to quickly revive each other if one falls, thus preventing the abrupted end of a co-op session, but depletes for everyone if someone actually dies. It's certainly a good system for large environments where there may be large and difficult stretches between checkpoints. And of course, for the ones who want to play with friends, it would be very interesting to see a party system so your summon doesn't automatically return when their task is completed and can select to continue onward exploring with you. This would provide a seamless co-op experience for the game, perhaps even allowing your summon to use acquired currency and adjust stats or equipment. We would really like to see the From Software twist on some of these ideas. From Software could take these simpler PvP and co-op concepts that work so well and expand on them to bring a multiplayer progression ladder that keeps the game going long after you have finished the last boss by introducing material farming, unique items and special skills, or rewards available by redoing bosses during co-op, changing your character tendency, defeating other players, or changing a world tendency or world event. And now we want to know what you think. What will the multiplayer of Elden Ring be like? Are you expecting something completely different from Dark Souls? Or similar but renamed like Bloodborne did? Do you expect to see the same netcode in P2P? What are your most wanted changes to the system and what do you really really want to keep the same? Let us know in the comments below.